Welcome to Machismo TV, the ultimate destination for modern men seeking to upgrade their lifestyle. Our channel covers a range of topics including current events, fitness, personal development, and technology to help you look, feel, and live your best life. Tune in for actionable advice and engaging discussions. We the willing, led by the unknowing, are doing the impossible for the ungrateful. We have done so much, with so little, for so long, we are now qualified to do anything, with nothing. So join up. Do your part. There's a long war ahead. And we need you. Okay, the last thing that my ego needs is rapping on a primo beat. I'm trying to peel the music. Okay, the last thing that my ego needs is rapping on a primo beat. Yeah, 34 felony counts. Unbelievable. But how can I restore my public image? Wait, what? A music video? I sing to gain sympathy? Akon, you genius. All right, let's go. But if you put your diamonds in the water, you're going to have to take it back. I'll be known. I don't be known. Yeah. Uh. Made my first thousand and I shed a tear. Mansion with the chandeliers coming next year. Uh. It's hard to fellowship with all of my peers. I'm light years ahead. ahead. Pouring lean for my friends is dead. I was on the corner while you niggas were still in bed. I was, I was 20,000 up while you were still in the red. When I get this billion, I'ma make sure my niggas fed. Like Jesus Christ at the dinner table, I'm breaking bread. Fuck with me. I can pay your car note off with one giffy. I can shoot your car door off with one blicky. Telegram conversations if you try and hit me. Just left Neiman Marcus. I spent 750. Uh, your rent's 750. Me and my strap like Max and Frenchie, the perfect match. The puppeteer when it comes to rap, no strings attached. I can make you disappear just by lifting my hat. Dawn shit, or champagne, Perignon shit. Just pour the glass of this crystal shit. You'll be rapping on the bottle, block the sun rays. What you broke niggas know about this? Low top, Valentino kicks. Women wanna kiss. Private jet for my business trips. Rose pedals by the landing strip. When I get off the plane, playing chess with my shooter, trying to strengthen his brain. Can't make mistakes in the murder game. For everybody he catch, he get another raise. He know that crime pays. Flood your block with a crime wave. My Glock nine ways. I got little homies my mom's age, and they'll kill for me. 
sound like a movie to you, but this shit real to me. Never snitch, you never cross your friends. The principles was instilled in me. You never met a nigga real as me. Uh, made my first thousand and I shed a tear. Made my first thousand and I shed a tear. It's real talk. I was like 16. Made my first thousand and I shed a tear. Made my first thousand and I shed a tear. I shed a tear. Smash the road, the flyest nigga on the whole globe. My front gate got a whole cold. Talking business on the phone with some Muslims out in Yemen in the gold throw. Fashion week in Athens, Greece, eating spinach with some old hoes. You old niggas broke in the shows. You gotta sell tickets to get paid for your shows. I get paid either way it goes. I get paid even if nobody goes. Bitches see me and say life goes. <laughs> Your lady want me, that's how life goes I might let her give me head, it depends on how the night goes Got a stable full of white toes Green beam on the top, I nickname that bitch the light pole Tennis bracelet hanging off a nigga wrist and it's white gold Everything I do is ice cold Bitch, I'm stamped like a brick The hood show me love every chance that they get I'm the man. I ain't in the romance, I admit But I still hold hands with my chick Ice Lord, fly shit Big four fifth on my hip Like a sidekick My life is like a crime flick Wine cellar in the crib Work the moose, nigga dime shit I came a long way from my mom's shit I made it cause I grind it my last vinyl cost a hundred cause I signed it Niggas need to be reminded Niggas need to be reminded Seen the top five list and I climbed it Turn this up and rewind it Come on Niggas talk tough when you FaceTime it Until shit turn violent Real talk Uh Are you a true fan of daring, thrilling, and captivating content? Get ready to take your entertainment to the next level with Machismo TV, the home of groundbreaking shows and exclusive behind-the-scenes access. Join our Patreon page. Ain't nobody submitting to no pussy ass nigga. Ain't nobody submitting to no soft ass lover. Ain't nobody submitting to a nigga that they go hard. Ain't nobody Ain't no grown woman submitting to a man. Nigga, I don't care if you got a G-Berry life better than you do. Ain't nobody submitting to no man that ain't leaving us nowhere. Get back, demon. Did you know that scientists now believe that some people are actually born with a genetic predisposition to bitch dependency, Tom? And exactly when did you become a relationship counselor? Well, sharing this pimp knowledge for an exorbitant fee is my way of giving something back to the community, Tom. I want to help you, Tom, I do. But I need you to help me help you. Huh. Help me help you. Yeah, okay. Now, tell me if you would about this bitch you have an unhealthy dependency on. Could we please not call her a bit, bit, Say it, bitch. bitch. Yeah. I, yes, we've got to call her that, Tom. I'm sorry. After what she's done, not calling her a bitch would be disrespectful to you, and I'm not able to do that. Now, please continue, Tom. Well, my wife, Sarah. I mean, she's the best woman in the world. It's to me, Tom, like some of the passion has gone out of your marriage, and perhaps you're not providing enough excitement for it. It's a normal thing in long-term relationships. And you can help me fix it? 
Hell no, I'm gonna help you make that bitch behave. She wants excitement, she can take her ass to the movies. That's gonna make it happen. That's gonna make it happen. If a man wanna know how to meet a nice woman, how he meet her? With this. First damn word come out your mouth, I got money. <laughs> but those not respectable women. I don't want no respect. I want some ass. <laughs> damn the respect. I want you to break down like a 12 gauge double barrel shotgun and show me what you're working with. But don't you want commitment? What? To who? You to don't who? want to be committed. <laughs> I'm committed to getting her to that bedroom and giving her what she need and let her go. No, no, no baby, no. That's because you don't want to listen to her because she's young and she ain't got nothing in her head. So you I need an older woman your age. Y'all can talk about what I'm looking for. You could talk about what I'm looking for. Is the not 70s, in her head. the 80s. You could talk about growing up. What I'm looking for ain't in her head. Trust me. Headroom. Max Headroom. This is what happens when you don't follow the men. We see, listen, black men. We, you know, we we can we can tell the future. We we can tell the future. We know what's going to happen, especially when it comes to politics. We know what's going to happen. We done seen it time and time again. We know what's going to happen. We say, hey, listen here. Do not vote for the Democrats. Do not support that party because if you do support that party, what's going to end up happening is all those policies, all those all those policies that don't help you at all is going to be enforced on a major scale to the point where you're going to suffer from it directly. We said this plenty of times, even to listen. And this is where black men are at fault that black men were only at fault at trying to help Keisha that wasn't even under their leadership. Black men were trying to put Keisha on. Black men were trying to tell Keisha, hey, listen, this ain't it. This ain't it right here. Don't do it to yourself. Keisha didn't listen to us. Didn't care about what we had to say. Following Democratic Brad. So now look at them. And if you wonder what I'm talking about, I'm talking about look at these major cities being overrun by these uh, immigrants. A lot of them are violent. A lot of them are violent. Have you seen the crimes they've been committing? Even on police officers, I see, I seen a, 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 a officer get get hands and feet put on him. Hands and feet put on him. Hands and feet, they jumped the officers. And it's so politically ran that these officers, they didn't they didn't get up, pull out, and start blaming. If these were black men, young black males, that's what they would have done. They didn't do that because they didn't want any backlash. You notice that, right? Y'all seen that video. They didn't want no backlash. They would have got a, a, a severe, a severe media lashing for doing that. A severe media lashing. So what's happening, right, is that using all, all the government funded you know, all the, uh, you know, government funds that they usually would give to Keisha, they're not giving it to Keisha anymore. They giving it to them. Yeah, Keisha, you voted for that. They giving it to them. 
all the government funded programs, Section A, uh, you know, vouchers. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, black men, they get vouch they get stipends besides Section 8. See, y'all think it's just Section 8 they get. Section 8, Medicaid, they get vouching, they get how they get food vouchers. Yeah, if if they decide they they want to take those food stamps and trade it in to get themselves a weave. They can get full vouchers. They can get full vouchers. For a couple of hundreds here, a couple of hundreds there. Oh, but they taking all those government assistant programs and they're giving it to them now. Now, Keisha, that's why I'm telling you, black men, that's why you see a lot of them moving from those cities elsewhere because they're cutting them not even in half. They're cutting them completely off. They're cutting them completely off. I saw I saw one official say uh say something uh, in in, in uh, uh, context of the the system that they uh, set up for them is only supposed to be temporary. You know what that means, Keisha? You know when they start talking like that, they don't usually talk like that to you. They understand you're a bum. That you look at this as generational. Projects, generational. Oh yeah, they coming for those projects next. Oh yeah, Keisha, you're getting kicked out the projects next. You're getting kicked out the projects next. When they start talking like that, you know what that means. That means they're trying to get you up out of there. Yeah, they just gave, they just approved $77 million to house these uh, uh, illegals. $77 million. $77 million. On top of the tens of tens of millions they already just approved last year and, and, and the year before, they just gave them like 20, 20 something million a couple of months ago for something. Now they just get they, another 77 million to house them. Yeah, it's a wrap, Keisha. Now, understand something. It's bad. It's bad for everybody that lives in those areas. It, it really is. It's bad for everybody that lives in those areas because you're going to see a lot of crime. Crime is jumping. This is nothing new, black men. I want y'all to... Y'all, do y'all remember uh, the mid-80s? The mid-80s. The, the mid to late 80s. Do y'all remember... Uh, Miami Y'all remember Miami During during the uh, Cocaine Cowboys area I mean era Excuse me not era Era You know what I'm talking about You know what I'm talking about What happened was A lot of the um, A lot of uh, Cuban Immigrants Have made it into uh, Miami and they turned it into a war zone. They turned it into war zone. Go look up. Go look up that. Uh, there's there's a document. There's there's so many documentaries on that. Go look up the you know Miami in the mid '80s to late '80s. It was a war zone. We talking about broad daylight. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. Automatic. Automatic weapons just going off. Broad daylight. That's what you're about to see because these 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 uh immigrants, you see what they're doing. 
They're sending people to the upper room. They're sending people to the upper room. So far, I've seen three of them that sent people to the upper room. So far, I've seen three. There's maybe more, but so far, I've seen three. One, they let go. They let this one guy, this this one immigrant, got locked up for assaulting a police officer, right? Get locked up, let go, and he ended up shooting something up. Another one ended up getting let go, right? And ended up sending someone to the upper room. Now, it's going to get bad over there. It's going to get very bad in those cities. And why? Because this is what the government want. The government want, and, and I'm talking about the Democratic Party, right? The Democratic Party want that. They, they don't care about your safety as far as what you're going through. All they care about is votes. All they care about is votes. That's the reason why this is happening, uh, black men. This is about votes. The more people come in, the more, the more, uh, the more, um, the more heads that come in, the more people that they can bring in. They believe that those would turn into votes because they're helping them. What they don't understand, right? And this is what this is what's so slow about them. What they don't understand that majority of these immigrants, when they come over here, they don't vote Democrat. They, they don't vote for the Democrats. They don't. They don't. You know, once they able to vote, once they get citizenship, who would guess who they vote for? They vote for the Republican Party. Majority of them vote for the Republican Party. The Democrats are doing this thinking that they're going to vote for them because they're helping them. And the reason why they using they they uh the reason why they need these uh these bodies that's all they are to them right as far as the immigrants the reason why they need them is because more and more black people right as far as black men has said no nah, we're not we're not rocking with it we're not rocking with it we're not rocking with y'all. More and more black men said, nah, we're not rocking with y'all. More and more, we're not rocking with y'all. See, black men, you were taught that your vote don't matter. You know, you don't have any power. You, When it comes to giving your vote, you have power there. You do have power there. Don't give it. Simple as that. Don't give it. As a collective, once you stop supporting something, it collapsed because they need that. They need your support. We're talking about millions, tens of millions saying no. We good. Wait, you haven't done anything for us. You haven't done anything for us. So that affects them. You know what keeps them afloat? Keisha. Keisha keeps them afloat. Keisha keeps them afloat. And that's why, you know, they saying, you know what? To the point where we don't have to offer them much anymore. They're going to vote for us regardless. So if they if we know they're going to vote for us regardless, why do we even have to continue to give them anything? We don't have to continue to give them anything. Let's give these illegals everything. Let's give these illegals everything and, and don't give them anything because we already know they're going to vote regardless. They know Keisha's short bus. So now, Keisha, you're suffering the most. People are going to suffer, but that it's going to take a while for it to start to hit them. But you're suffering starts now with all this going on why because you're a bum you people lay out the truth i am rank number one one that means i'm the best 
but this bomb is taking the easy matches. Fight another bomb. I'm telling you and everybody here, I'll fight him anywhere, anytime, for nothing. Fight him, fight him, fight him. to keep this boat from tipping over and you know niggas know I, I like the drama but i'm trying to keep this shit from tipping over mot i listened to the stream you you had some strong points without having to go left and i i want some of that on here right so I mean, I but that's let... not gonna happen if we're gonna talk about Africana studies and oh. this dude talking about intersectionality. But like, you talking about his name? I think that you're. Stuff in, I think it, it, that it, you're, it, 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 you're playing semantics. Intersectionality, no, sir, nexus, semantics. meeting of the meeting of no, the sir. fields. I mean, no, you sir. can you can try no, to sir. use these as it, daggers, it and I think that you're insulting people's is. intelligence it, it here is. that they don't you, know how to you, you know use words. Okay, so, salty balls so I, gave, I gave I gave I gave you me I gave you the panel. floor, and you consider yourself somebody who's esteemed and academic, and I respected you enough to allow you to go ahead and talk. Okay, I'm not going to get distracted. Day, you're just not going to sit here and run up the score on bullshit on your end. Now, stop the fucking car! Stop the car! Sit. Sneaky motherfucker, let's get it. You got you're you're admitting that the score is oh. being ran up because you're like, bro, actually like, giving hey, me safety. Dude, like MOT, you're, you're not giving him You're shooting yourself in the foot. No, you're no, not no, giving no. Him a chance to At talk. the end of the not, day, you like, don't even know what you're talking man. about. You're talking about intersectionality and everything else. We were talking about a very People know process. the difference between the words. Do they now? Do they now? <laughs> so this is hey, all in bad faith. Hey man, at the end of the day, you call yourself salty balls trying to <laughs> call yourself trying to have a serious conversation. Remember okay. that salty balls. Yeah. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Salty and balls. And don't and don't, 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 don't tell it it me what your name is, salty balls. And it's standing in your mouth, don't, right? Don't, don't. <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> Gotti! <laughs> the salty with MO what with BGS did you on the last stream. Man, you, you you held it down. I want you to so look salty. But at the end of the day, we were having a back and forth based off of things that were true. This guy's trying to bring in gobbledy gook like uh, <laughs> Junior, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, oh, catch that motherfucker now. Uh, uh masculinist and actual uh other things no, but like the point. Uh, the point I'm uh, trying to make here. The, that the, the point, point I'm trying to make about. here. That means you don't know. What let him you're make talking the about. point. Let him the make the point. The overall point is that you know to be t determinate enough to feel that you know fields are fixed enough that people are so focused that there's not going to be any nexus between two fields is asinine okay at the end of the day i mean i just dropped a um a journal article in the chat peer-reviewed where there's the meeting between african-american uh cultural studies or whatnot from the framework of hip-hop along with you know the use of therapy this happens normally and it happens normally all the time Therapy you can ask you can ask around if you're curious enough about you can ask around if you're curious curious enough about my pedigree um not, science uh, is good enough without hip-hop being associated with it sir okay poetry <laughs> there's a lot of... did not have to reference hip-hop did he he have to reference hip-hop shut the fuck up you always crying motherfucker uh, nigga, nigga. Oh. Do you have to reference hip hop at all? Let's kill that bastard now, man. Let's do it for Tommy. <laughs> you can, you know what? You can have it. You can have it. Bro, bro. You can have it. You can have it. You sound stupid. You got it. Fuck. You got it. Talking about hip hop in therapy. You, you got it. It's the opposite of therapy. Like at, hip hop at, is the dressing up of you, you illiterate, got it. You got it, nigga based processes. And <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. <laughs> something that should be respected in society. You, you, so like, once you start talking all. about um.
a, a, a masculinist perspective. You're, once you you're start 100%. talking about um, can I, can I say a, 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 a masculinist perspective, once you start talking about intersectionality, you got, you you got it, about bro. All this other stupid shit. You're not even talking you, about things you got that are scientific. You're always crying, motherfucker. You're not. You're not. Can I <laughs> Let's kill that bastard now, man. Let's do it for Tommy. These are all bullshit based fucking points. You messed with the wrong niggas, brother. You, you got it all, it's man. It's not even true. Like, uh, it's uh, not salty, even true. You, salty, do you mind if I say something to NFC real quick? Oh you, my you god. god. If you're allowed, this shit go is ahead. crazy. Junior, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, oh, kiss that motherfucker now. Go, go ahead. Like, I, I was just gonna say, I was actually, like, I actually wanted to give him his props for changing, like I said, for changing his, his, opin his uh, opinion on his hiring practices, where he was talking about, like, he didn't want to hire anybody that had children. And That's the reason not that he explained what the, the conversation tree, was. Like, you know, not what the finished, conversation bro. was. You've been talking this That's whole time. That's not what the conversation just... was. But you're not going to mischaracterize my points. That's I'm not, not mischaracterizing you. I said I was. You're mischaracterizing your own like, points. No, sir. Like, you're not. That's At exactly the end of what the you're day, doing. I was actually about to dude, give you your dude, credit. Dude, dude, listen, listen, listen. I don't care credit. about your credit. Take care of my brother, man. But you're not going to mischaracterize the conversation. I gave you a specific like. <laughs> characterization of what the conversation was about before. You can't that, even distinguish between the critical framework of of intersectionality and a word being used in the context of conversation. I don't give a I fuck about none of that serious. shit. Like once you start I talking about intersectionality, you you're not even talking to me oh, anymore. I can't. It's still one of my boys in the back of the head. <laughs> I'm not ahead. even here for it. Sad. Okay. And like, okay. Like, hey, I thought this was gladiator school where logic reigns supreme here. That's the currency, bro, right? At the end not, of the I'm day, bro, like, the fact like, said he like bro, I'm not going to argue with a dude named Salty Balls about logic. Bullshit, man. You know what I'm talking about. Motherfucker, now. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, dude. Really? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> hey, you call your I, name I, salty I, balls, bro. Hey, I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, look, 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 look. To stay in your mouth. <laughs> Got it. <he>. Got it. <he. laughs> it's Check cool. This everybody, hey. everybody, pause for a second. Everybody, pause for a second. Shout out to D Rock then for the super sticker. I want to take this in a different direction. All right. Um. All right. So. What I was going to ask MOT was this. I get often asked, right? I get asked often, you know, what's my affiliation with BGS and yada, yada, yada. And, I, and I, you know, the, the, the question has been answered a million times. I said that when I came to the space, he's the one that promoted the channel, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, MOT, you have said in the stream, like, you know, like me and bgs be chilling we know each other in real life and i'm here to tell you that's not factual right well that's but, what he said that's what he said <laughs> oh you, you would have to link you would have to send me that link but but i mean he deletes a lot of his live streams and this nigga public, can't stop talking and even bro. though this guy at, like like cut, you're on, interrupting like, the host like, like, i don't i don't want to go no, 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 i'm not even interrupting the host it, i'm not actually correcting point. the actual statements that come out I of brought his that up. Oh, I'm I got a question. So with that being said, you saying that you have an issue with Dr. T because of his affiliation with BGS. And if yes. he wasn't connected to BGS, you would have less of a problem with him, which is pretty much. And I've said this, I've said the same on the stream. I said, your issue with me was my affiliation with BGS, right? What I'm saying is this, right? His affiliation with BGS is for the same reasons as mine. BGS brought him, et cetera, et cetera. So why can't what he say stand on his own merit as opposed to you that throwing him under the bus? Merit. No, let's let's the question. As opposed to you throwing him under the bus by association. Because to be honest, me and you say a lot of the same shit. We just approach it differently. We do. Like, I, I but, think we do. Say but I'm ducking shots from you and I'm shooting back in this for nothing because I'm affiliated with a guy you don't like. And to be honest, 
there's there's certain opinions on that we even align with right so what my thing is that has to be a one-on-one -on -one by itself do but do you do you find it productive to do that yes just, absolutely okay ex ex explain explain i'm i want to listen to this explain why at the end of the day anybody associated with bgs should be dead you're dead motherfucker. at the end of the day at the end of the day <laughs> this guy who's 65 years old who come online who haven't taken a side who should have right now living in a liberal society called california where everything is provided for him uh, Marcus, can I say something society, real quick? It, like, what the fuck is going on? I, I, like, <gasps> only way you're going home is shot, motherfucker! Like, like, dude, listen. At the end of the day, you have to understand that this guy is here to leverage the credibility of other individuals because he has none. That's my point. That's my point of BGS being here at all. He Bro. doesn't have any type of credibility, period. And what he does well, uh, is he comes to these lost, broken, dumb, ignorant black so, men, and they want to have a voice so bad that they will get behind a 65-year-old grifter like, who don't my only have disagreement with, anything my only disagreement else with to your do online. You talk over everybody but, but, else, I'm going to talk over you. you yeah, 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 but else, at the I'm end of the day... You have to so ask him to grant you an audience. Yeah, like this nigga Grant me an audience? Like, I don't need an audience with BTS. Talking. Bro, listen, uh, man. I'm gonna, get you, I'm, gonna get you, I'm gonna get you, motherfucker. Bullshit, man. You know what I'm talking about. It's Uncle Remus <laughs> spinning his warm, funny stories. What black women are doing? I don't care. They're their own group. When they decide to work with us, they will. Otherwise, mm. they won't. And they don't. And they don't have to. They have their own power, their own productivity. They don't need us for anything. And I'm okay with that. It's Uncle Remus <laughs> spinning his warm, funny stories. Oh, niggas got to that. Timberland, niggas got to that too. Mercedes, Versace, white women. Niggas, niggas, niggas. No, I don't think we should use the word, and I'll tell you why. Because niggas have gotten used to it, that's why. Hell, they like it now. It's like when you grow in crops and you strip the soil of its nutrients and goodness, and then you can't grow nothing. You gotta rotate your race of slurs. Now, I know it's hard, cause niggas just rolled off the tongue the way sweat rolled off a nigga's forehead. But we cannot let that be a crutch, especially when there are so many other fine substitutes. Spade, porch monkey, jigaboo. I say next time you gonna call a darky a nigga, call that coon a jungle bunny instead. He's a troublemaker. Well, I have got news for you, Ralph. You and Norton and some of the men in this building can learn an awful lot of things from Carlos. He happens to be a gentleman, Ralph. And that seems to be something that you have forgotten all about. He treats us like women. That's something you've forgotten too, Ralph. You seem to have forgotten that I am a woman. I forgot that you're a woman. How could I? You're always yapping. <laughs> what do you mean I don't treat you like a woman? I treat you like a woman. I let you sew, I let you cook, I let you wash the windows, I let you clean up. Boys don't do that, Alice. <laughs> Yeah, of course. It's Trump all day. What you talking about? Yeah. You know what it is? I thought they sent me in a hospital for like support. Hold on, hold on. Divesting gone wrong. Nikki O and Christine Man. Sex workers need to understand marriage will not reform a John or a sex addict. How did Nikki and Chris meet? They really met on seeking arrangements, but you know how these divestors are. 
They always got some fake story about the old decrepit white man saving them from another man. Sounds familiar? Ami McClure said the same thing. I was uh, standing in the way where it says, get out of the way, and I wanted to show her that I was confident in myself. I first saw him, I remember him walking up, so I'm already being bothered by the guy who's sitting next to me. Um, he was a truck driver, and he was asking me to- I gave him a look, I looked at him, I just get up. Right. He was asking me to take him to his hotel, and I'm like, what? And then Chris- If anybody was gonna take her to- On my hotel. left side, right, you were on my left side. I was on your left side, because the right side is yeah, my game. He came on my left side, and, you, you and I smile a lot. Anytime I'm shy, I just smile a lot. She seems, and so she was smiling at me, which was always a good sign. You know, anytime a girl smiles at a guy, <laughs> that means- that they're interested, right? Okay, so I was smiling. And I remember noticing his shoes were tight, tight as hell. He had on some new balances. They were dirty. The top was flipping was, off. In my A game, they were talking. They, they were talking. talking. They were talking before his ass. So his shoes were dirty. His coat had stains on it. And I'm just like, what and, would make this guy even like have the guts to think that he but, could talk to me? That's what I'm saying. When, if you can look like that and still be have a, a good, strong presence to yourself, if you can wear your, your jacket that's a little tight with stains on it. It wasn't tight. It. it was actually big. Was he had on blue jeans. It did. But I remember jeans and a trench coat. And I was my, like. With my new balance. The talking and, uh, new balance. And I'm, I'm, Only one of them was talking. I don't know. Your pants are really big and not fitted at all. Yeah. No, because you know if you're trying to dress fancy and you know, yeah, your hair was kind of messy. I didn't. I don't want my clothes to do the talking. I want to do the talking. I mean, I I let the clothes um, a show that that I just don't care. That just shows how much he values her. He was a dirty white man, and she still smiled at him to let him know she was interested. Read between the lines. He had to disguise himself because he was there to meet her, prostitute for a quote-unquote date. Who is Chris Thienman? Chris Wikipedia entry, Christopher Allen Thienman, born June 6, 1965, is a former American college football player who was a defensive lineman in the World League of American Football, LAF, and the Canadian Football League, CFL, during the early 1990s. He has also been accused of bribery, perjury, and assault. The assault charge and arrest stem from two separate incidents with an ex-girlfriend named April. The first incident occurred in September of 2013. Here is a brief summary from the Courier Journal before April's identity had been revealed. The woman, who was not identified, and Thienman got into an argument while she was driving, according to an arrest report from that incident. She allegedly stopped at an intersection and started walking down the street. The woman walked to her business, which was not identified, to call police. Thienman followed her and pushed his way into the building, the report said. Thienman pushed her and when he tried to take her phone, he put his arm around her neck and tried to strangle her, the report said. The following year, Chris was arrested again after being charged with violating April's emergency protective order. From the Courier Journal, Louisville businessman and former mayoral candidate Chris Thienman is accused of violating an emergency protective order after police say he had his employees remove the doors at a gym once owned by his former girlfriend. Thienman, 48, ordered his employees on April 30th to remove doors from a former Snap Fitness located on property he owns in the 10100 block of Dixie Highway, according to an arrest warrant. His employees placed old equipment that did not belong to the woman in the gym the next day. Police say that because the woman has a vested interest in the closed gym, Thienman violated the order. Other white people seem not to like him. They don't vote for him and all have something negative to say about him. You know the saying, white people know white people best. And speaking about the First Amendment, O'Connell made the following remarks about Thiemann. He was convicted by a jury of his peers, a conviction which was upheld by the courts of this county. Therefore, he's obviously free to speak in the manner he wants. But my office and my prosecutors, the women in my office will not be intimidated by the speech of Mr. Thiemann. The divester married a fraud, predator, and a sex addict who likes to frequent Asian prostitutes. It makes you wonder why he couldn't marry an Asian woman? Perhaps it's because the only woman available to him was a black woman who looks like Terrell Owens. How dreadful. Divesting gone super wrong. Okay, honestly, I've had enough. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Really? Three pieces, three, from three people I have never met in my life. From three publications that are supposed to be about uplifting black people, which is all I have dedicated my life to doing. Shit! What hubris do I have? You people literally cannot stand that someone has studied 
and is speaking on what they study, that someone has read and is speaking on what they read. You can't stand that someone loves us, that someone loves us so much that their passion is so exemplary and is exuding through the phone that it touches people who literally have never felt love that much and they don't know how to process it. That's what you're feeling. I wanted to send all the love to everyone who has shown me love. But you people who are continuing to attempt to break me down, you will not break me. You cannot break me. I am loved, I am anointed, I am touched, I am working through the blood of our ancestors. You will not break me. And it is so sad that you are so broken that this is the effort that you would take to try and get some clout. And you know what, let's say I did get broken. Y'all will be the first ones to be like, see, y'all be doing too much. No, big up to all my strong black women who are supporting other strong black women and every other person supporting us. We love you. The rest of y'all can suck up. Robert, I'd offer to help you with your bag, but you're a coon. What's he doing here? He's your babysitter. Come on, granddad. Me and Riley don't need no babysitter. We can take care of ourselves. Yeah, it's not like we're going to try to kill each other. Shut up. Do what Rucker says and don't mess up my house. Come on. You me and like this punk people. fool right here. Okay, first of all, ain't nobody talking while I'm talking, so shut the fuck up. My name is Uncle Rucker, and I will be nigger sitting you two until your grandfather retires. Your granddaddy picked me because I am a licensed zoologist. I have studied a variety of wild animals, and the African male is by far the most savagely cunning. This is an opportunity to observe you niggas in your natural habitat and collect data. But be warned, whatever nigger trickery you got up your sleeves does not affect me. Hell, we might not even have a country if it wasn't for the word nigger. White man said, nigger, pick that cotton. Nigger, bail that hay. Hurry up, nigga! That's America you building! And that's exactly what nigga is. It's an American original. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. Hey, listen, fellas. We done with the whole masculine provider male era. We're in our soft guy era, okay? Drizzle, drizzle. Listen, I don't know who needs to hear this, but until that woman asks you to be her husband, you don't have to do husband-like things. Stop giving these women husband advantages and amenities, and you're still a boyfriend. Until that ring is on your finger, you shouldn't be doing anything, period. Drizzle, drizzle. Like... Y'all be so caught up on getting with Dusties and all that. You need to start going after their moms. See, I know a lot of y'all think that older women may not be that much attractive or whatever the case may be. But there's a lot of good looking older women. And I feel like you guys can deal with these older women who is going to take care of you and treat you like a king that you are. Drizzle, drizzle. Now, there's 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 a point where as as a man in your soft guy era, you shouldn't be pumping your own gas. You shouldn't be cleaning out your car. You shouldn't be having to change your tires. You shouldn't be having to have to put air in your tires. You shouldn't have to mow the grass. That's all the responsibilities of your woman. The moment you become a husband, then things change. But until then, that woman should be taking care of everything and you shouldn't be showing her no reason on why she should stick with you for the rest of her life and in hopes that she makes you her husband. Drizzle, drizzle. Uh, you need to stop giving out so much to these women. Like, y'all giving up the dookie quick as hell. And y'all dropping it off. And these women are not appreciating it. I think you need to hold out. Even if you had sex with 100, 200 women, you need to hold out and make that woman wait until she shows you that she's capable and that she's loving enough for you to give your body to her. You know, because... At the end of the day, it's all about us. It's all about us. We just want our equal rights as men. So drizzle, drizzle. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem but you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing 
in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. And a fox is almost, is always more dangerous in the forest than the wolf. You can see the wolf coming. You know what he's up to. But the fox will fool you. He comes at you with his mouth shaped in such a way that even though you see his teeth, you think he's smiling. Take him. She's not lying. But I have to say something, because George, I'm old enough to say this. Uh, I've seen two movements outside of the social justice movements in my life on the political side. One was the Reagan movement. Reagan had a hold on his base, the country at large. They saw him as someone who was willing to stand up for American values, whatever that might have meant. Now, I thought it was reactionary. Uh, the other movement I saw was, was Barack Obama, hope and change. That galvanized the American people. I've never seen it thing like this with Donald Trump. I mean, what doesn't kill you make you stronger? I mean, being convicted, I mean, being indicted, and that's making him stronger? Raising $10 million using an ugly mugshot yep. uh, to raise money? This is a movement. And anyone who thinks that you can apply the old political rules to try to defeat this candidate based on he's scary, he's ugly, whatever you might want to call it, this is a movement. And they have to I've never said this before. I've never advocated for this before. I'm going to let Quentin and How To Man have it after this. Um, this is crazy. I, I have never, ever said this that I'm about to say right now. And I, I didn't think that I would ever come to this point. It's time to get y'all passports. Anton Daniels officially says, men, you should get your passports. You've heard it here first. Anton was one of the main individuals, a starch advocate for men staying in the United States and tolerating the relationships that they were getting, well, the quality of relationships in which you were getting. Now, he said, men, I thought I'd never say this, but you should get your passports. We're gonna do a reaction to this video as well as some of the commentary that he and some of his team had to say about the passport bro movement in the past. And why is Anton as well as others changing their mind about the movement right now? But before we get started, my name is Andre and you are watching Travel Unraveled Love Crossing Borders Edition. Make sure that you guys subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell, make sure you click that like button because we like you, we really do, so make sure that you like us too. Not to hold you up, let's get started with the video. Crazy. I, I have never ever said this that I'm about to say right now, and I, I didn't think that I would ever come to this point. It's time to get y'all passports. But before we go any further into that statement, let's go back to how he and his panel felt at the beginning of this year when it came to the Passport Bro movement. Oh, Keon, what do you think about that? You're new. I don't know your intake about Passport Bros. Mm, I understand it, but I don't agree with it. I feel like if you can't if you can't deal with the women in your own country, but then you go to another country to to, I guess to try to save them or whatever. I think that's crazy to me. If you can't deal with the women in your own country, why would you go to another country and enslave them? Don't let that slide by you. Because a lot of men in the United States have been coerced by the women in the United States to think that we go to these other countries to entrap, to mislead, and even enslave. And black people should never use that word lightly. I don't understand why black people love to use the word enslavement so whimsically when we understand the destructive nature of slavery. I get a woman going in those 50 words, right? And they bring her back over here and she gets... That's another misinformation. They believe that we only go after women that only know 50 words of English. My wife, as many of you know, is fluent in English. Many of your wives are fluent in many languages. And the irony of it is most other countries teach at least two to three languages in school such as the philippines such as thailand so english is not as far-fetched as these people think and the last statement that he made is he believes that we're going to be bringing our women back to the united states and they're going to change over and become americanized anyway brothers don't do it um, i feel like she's going to act just like most of the women in america so I feel like I, I just don't see a point. I, I I mean, I understand passport bros, but I don't fully agree with it personally. You know, I feel like you should be able to get deal with the women in your own country you know, and here in America, in my opinion. Do you also think that guys should, should marry women of the same race? No, 
I, I, I think um, not at all. I, I don't. I won't. I wouldn't pull a color when it comes to marriage. I just think if they both equally yoked, you know, they both align uh, together, then I think I go for it. But I, I don't think they should do it based on race, no. So a man could have selection when it comes to race, but he's mocked for having selection when it comes to countries. I want you guys to think about that. The Sanchez gonna hit you. You better watch out. <laughs> Yeah. I'm curious uh, as to what Coco. This is this, this, this goofy. This conversation, this passport, this passport board conversation is goofy. So let me light this bitch up. <laughs> that man know. said they going over there looking for wives. Stop. They're <laughs> not going over there looking for wives. They're going over there looking for a quick nut. Mm -hmm. That's cheap. Cheap. All the all the countries they name. Colombia. You gotta get on the plane, Philippines, and Thailand. <laughs> including Europe, including other parts of Southeast Asia, including other areas such as Brazil, such as Argentina, such as Ecuador, Paraguay, Uruguay, also other countries in Central America. Passport bros are also in Romania, as well as before it was destroyed, Ukraine. So to sit back and make the assumption that passport bros are only going to Thailand, Colombia, Brazil, or the DR, that's not true. Secondly, to make the mistake of assuming that a black man with a passport is automatically a passport bro, that's not true. Some are just black men with a passport on vacation. And whatever they do on vacation, that's what they do in countries. But to assume that every time a black man gets a passport, he, he's out there looking for the ladies. That's not necessarily true. As I always say, passport bros are not men that are just looking for wives. Passport bros are men that are looking for new lives. What do they have in common? Them three places. They wanted some exotic it's prostitution. Legal. But that, but it's that legal. Think so now what, what hold, hold up let me finish uh mr taylor you know what i'm saying look what they do is they go ahead and take they they hundred dollars over there and they transfer a hundred dollars to to a hundred thousand pesos and they get over there and trick they, they ain't coming looking for no wives okay i guess i'm not looking for a wife solo traveler or d's not looking for a wife uh or girlfriend or steady girlfriend you got guys like richie mack that's uh, zooming to thailand has been in a stable relationship since he's been over there you've got several men that are in so solidified relationships here in colombia and beyond but at the same time people who don't have passports in the united states or don't travel much with their passport in the united states have a lot to say about the passport bro movement now realize this commentary was at the beginning of the year now anton daniels has changed his mind in regards to men getting their passports and let's hear the reaction of the ladies on his panel Oh my God! Look at Listen, y'all. Look, okay. I've never been the type of dude that advocate for. I don't understand it, and so listen. I apologize to every last one of these dudes. Right. Yeah, you know, I've ever, go. ever said that you don't necessarily need a passport. Don't get him. I apologize, <laughs> y'all. It doesn't. It doesn't. Please, please go. go. Get it, your passport. You see how Anton is looking at his own panel? These are your sisters. These are your sisters that were there for you sitting next to you in church, in synagogues, and mosques. These are the same sisters that were with you in grocery stores. But since you decided to take the audacity or have the audacity to take advantage of choice, to take advantage of choice, they mock and laugh at you. Just like the brothers in the church video, they mock and laugh at you. Most of these women on this panel have never used a passport. And if they have, they probably used it maybe once or twice in their life already mentioned to you guys statistically over 50 percent of passports are used 
by U.S. citizens to travel only to Canada, Mexico, and maybe some of the Caribbean islands. Only 34% of U.S. citizens, including military, have passports. U.S. citizens who are of African descent make up less than 5% of all passport holders. This is the reason why I say if you are a true traveler, an expat, a passport bro, a blue book gentleman, don't waste your time waiting for the okay of people in the United States because most of them don't travel and most of them don't even have a passport to travel. Look at these women from other countries who's going to exploit you more. Please. You're going to get these women from other countries that are going to exploit you more. The key word is more because you're already being exploited by women in the United States. $500 dinners. You can't take me on a coffee date. It's got to be four or 500. You've got to be making a hundred thousand dollars a year, six feet, six pack, and your penis must be longer than six inches. You are going to be exploited. But if you go to another country, if you leave the sisters there, if you leave the modern women there, you're going to be exploited more. I don't think men can get any more exploited than they are as in the United States. It's go there. Who's going to exploit you more getting, than the woman over here? Getting, go, but because they're submissive, you're willing to take that. Getting off go the ahead and be willing no. to bring her, go get her them. mama. Her Please sister, go get them. Her, oh. her, 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 no, her, prepare to take care of her entire family. Please, we want. That's another miss, a misconception. Be prepared to take care of her entire family. I can say from the experience of others and myself, I have not had to take care of a family. Why? I don't I didn't marry into an impoverished family. When it comes to looking for a wife or a significant other in another country, I always say this, who her people is. Like they used to say in the south, who is her family? Not just who is she? Who is this beautiful woman in this foreign country? No. I advocate for men and many of us advocate for men to look for a quality woman that's coming from a quality family. So when these women watch 90 Day Fiance and they assume that that's the life that passport bros are living, they're basically lying to themselves. You also experience this. This is, this is your death. You're mm -hmm. right. We, we're, we're not, we're not, this is what you were made for. This is what you were made for. This, this, at the end of the day, guys, don't waste your time caring about what women in the United States have to say. Like I always say, I don't care what women in Greece have to say. Why? I don't live in Greece. And I don't care what women in the United States have to say. Why? Because I don't live in the United States. You're shining our, you are winning in the space. We we really advocate for all black men who are just so tired of black women. You have failed. We have failed you here in America. Please get the passport and go. Please tell me all about it. We're done. We're done. <laughs> stay over there. You can stay. Or, you can stay, baby. Or bring it here. You can stay if you want to pay those fees too. Hey, it's, it's not. It's not. It's not black women in America that 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 he's advocating for guys to get away from. And I think y'all missed it. He said it already. Women women america has been ruining women and that's a fucking fact right all no this women empowerment shit uh we we can do for do for ourselves i don't need a man i want a man all that goofy shit hey look let me put let me put the world in perspective for y'all right I, I i've been to a few different places in uh in the world a few of them have been bombed out and depleted and one thing that i realize is in these third world countries Right. Even second world countries, women cling to their men because they realize that they need a man to make it in the world. The only reason why women can do this whole full uh, independent shit that they do in America is because of men. Men set up the system for you guys to be able to do that. Your average, look, not even above average athlete or anything, just your average 14 year old male can dog walk a fully grown woman in a fight. With dog walk, it wouldn't even be fair. No, it's not true. I don't know. I don't know too many grown ass men that's like what are you talking about? 14 year old might whoop my ass. Huh? I'm saying that to say not not that you guys uh you guys uh uh just need men to 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 put money on the table, right? But you need a man. You're you're literally biologically set up 
to need a fucking man but all of this obstinance and intransigence that you guys display is counterintuitive to you guys having a relationship all this, this, this these I, uh, uh, ideas that a lot of you guys can have. you say that word again what's intransigence is that what you said right? In transit, he's going to explain, or one of the ladies is going to explain, it means not willing to change. It means that you carry behavior in which you see the situation at hand. You see the cliff that you're walking over and you are not willing to change directions. You're so angry and you're so stubborn that you are willing to walk over a cliff just to try to prove your point that's what that means what does that mean i'm sorry man my job isn't anyone's dictionary man my whole point is that a lot of you guys ideals are antithetical to having a relationship it means you're right? unwilling I'm just, to change. so the choice is up to you the ladies have already showed you that they are not only argumentative but they are like he said antithetical meaning that they do not want to change so the only way change is going to take place is it's up to you you are in control of your destiny for most men as i said most people of color only five percent of us even have passports to use over 50 percent of passports are used only for canada and mexico therefore most of you that are watching this content i understand you're watching it for entertainment and for others we're trying to put out this information for inspiration. Now I'm on my way to the comment section to hear what you guys have to say about Anton Daniels finally admitting that men should get their passports. Make sure you click that like button. We like you, we really do. Make sure you like us too. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video as we put our lives on airplane mode. we go from that movement to today where women need to be compensated for their time and attention we went from free love to pay to play transactional uh, I think the culture shifted into more like a like a, uh, we were trying to like compensate for what women didn't get all this time and it's kind of like an overload to be well the achievement is measured in terms of income and occupation that is economic achievement obviously there are other kinds of things that make make up life but um, and I wouldn't want to Stigmatized groups as permanently underachievers. If you look at generation by generation, you find incredible changes. Uh, the bl black population, especially, you see this in the data. Blacks who have education and who have experience have been moving up on whites, and in some cases, overtaking whites. If you look at blacks who have not finished high school, uh, blacks who come from uh, background of uh, families that are broken and so forth. They are falling further and further behind, not only further behind the population in general, but further behind whites of this, with the same disadvantages. What do you blame for that? You're not blaming middle class blacks who are beneficiaries of affirmative action. Are you? I'm blaming the incentives created by affirmative action. Because when it comes to the incentives that are created, the businessman is going to try to protect himself whatever way he can. And that means hiring those blacks who are overqualified, who have a long track record and so on. And that's what all the data shows, that the more, for example, black couples where the husband and wife are both college educated now make more money than white couples where the husband and wife are both educated. But the black uh, uh, female headed family has lost real income in absolute term, terms over the past several years and has fallen further behind white female headed families. So the very opposite trends are going on at the same time and you can't argue this because of blackness or racism because both of them are black people. The black uh, uh, female-headed family has lost real income in absolute term of terms over the past several years and has fallen further behind white female-headed families. So the very opposite trends are going on at the same time and you can't argue this because of blackness or racism because both of them are black people. One group is shooting way ahead, one is falling further and further behind. And a large part of that reason, I believe, and the data seem to suggest, is because the incentives created by affirmative action and similar kinds of programs uh, just make it too dangerous to take a chance. I'm sick of y'all. Yeah, the first thing I'm about Section 8. Go get some Section 8. Who don't want no Section 8? Who want to be squabbling? How about 10 damn families living in one house and y'all worried about a bitch on Section 8? God, I'm living my best life over here. Living my best life over here on Section 8. And I'm 
fuck down on Section 8. I don't, I don't got no motherfucking plans or no future of getting off of it. Hmm. So if you're waiting on my Section 8, bitch, go stand back and lie, ho. You're gonna be waiting on Section 9, waiting on my motherfucking voucher. Show enough is, I ain't letting it go. Period. Period. I'm dying on it. Hmm. If you had custody in your pants, you could approve from Section 8 too. But y'all, y'all too lost in the streets. So you ain't got your chair. The next bitch never want your chair on low income. So you're mad. And it be the man's. Come on, some Section 8. Y'all want a bitch on Section 8 so bad, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. I'm sick of y'all. Whoa! You don't think too long? No, but neither do I. Neither do I. I don't think too long. But goddamn it, when I need a break from work, I'm gonna pay zero. I'm gonna pay zero. Now, what bitch in that right mind leave a section eight that can say break from work and pay zero dollars and live like this, huh? You don't know that bitch in that right mind doing nothing like that. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all better go get y'all something to stop hating. Huh? Bitch, I take off when I want to. I retire for years at a time with my section eight because I can't. Look. I'm not saying that black men should date non-black women. I'm just saying that I understand what they do. The truth of the matter is, when it comes to our options as black men dating these black queens, we got it, we got it bad when we coming home to some moles that look just like that. We got it, we got it bad when you trying to find yourself a queen and you choose black. You know we got it bad when we come in the house and we gotta deal with them. That's when you know we got it bad when your girl that you marry look just like him. That's when you know that it's bad. When I say that they're ugly, you don't really know. The hoe that you laid up with look like a nigga bro. I'm telling you a lot of these women look like a nigga you used to change oil with. That nigga was hell with the oil filter. I can't understand why you wanna and they and they got more mouth than anybody talking about some you ugly, you this, you that, you crusty, you dusty. But you gotta look at them. You seen this girl up there chewing and eating, talking about passing down section eight to her grandkids. Just being rude, and that's the only way they can get attention. If they weren't rude people, it seemed like nobody would pay them any attention. So what do they do? Just go out and be loud everywhere they go. Chew and they got food in your mouth because they want somebody to watch their videos, and that's how they got to do it. And then the other one is trying to make her look bad, which I understand because she should. But she's sitting up there with 99 inches of yak in her hair, 99 inches of yak. You take it down, she look like a clown, 99 cent inches of yak in her hair. She got on this weird color lace front yak, and you can't tell her she the most beautiful girl in the world. You can't tell her she ain't pretty without that you with that European yak off. If somebody came and snatched that thing off her head, she go running away. She lose her power like Samson. Tell me I'm lying. You watch these chicks, they lose their power like Samson. You snatch that wig off their head, they be up there looking like a nigga you know. And then a face full of makeup just to do a video. And again, this what we got. I'm not saying you should date out your race, fellas. I'm just saying when you do, I understand. All of us should understand. If you gotta send your daughter through all the stuff they gotta go through just to look like normal human beings, and you can have a mixed child, and you ain't gotta sit up there and buy 99 inches of yak in your mixed child's head, you ain't gotta have your child feeling insecure because they gotta do all kind of stuff just to exit the house that looking non-black, but then quick to tell you use a raccoon cause you don't want them, boy stop. Anyway, the fact that they have to do all this to get attention tells you a lot about them. I'm Thomas Sotomayor. Come to the website, see more. I'm out. Oh, and P.S. You notice how both of those women had supreme confidence in how they look and how they act? Both of them. 
no matter if they weigh 5,000 pounds or five pounds, their self-esteem is through the roof. They will call you unattractive as if they live in houses with no mirrors. They will say something about your looks. First thing you say when you say something that bothers them, this group of people who would rather walk out the house with a bag on their head, a Jiffy Pop bag, than their own hair. This group of people who got to get tattoos on their neck and face and wear a uh, red velvet cake hat and pink and blue hair just to feel normal. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. Mm. Um, increasingly authoritarian, um, and it and it's in my opinion increasingly anti-American. Um, you should have the right to freedom of speech, and if people don't like what you say, there, there's you know there's an on-off button, there's a change the channel, you know, don't listen to it. There's a lot of things that that are said online that I don't like, and I don't talk about it because I don't watch it. You know, I don't like it. Okay, I don't have to watch it. And that's it. The end. But there is a pernicious force that has come up that has set themselves up as kind of like a judge, jury and executioner who want to police everybody else in various forms. You got the pick me police. You got the dick police. You got the, you know, the thought police, you know, all these different types of policing um, of other people's lives. And I, and I am inherently against that. I think that there should be a baseline set of rules for everyone to follow. And beyond that, let, let the uh, the free market of ideas sort it out. So. Do you think there's any chance of you, like, do you plan on coming back to YouTube? I don't, plan, it, I don't plan on it, no. But, uh, but you know, you can never say never. Um, that's what I've, I've lived long enough to know that. You can never say never. But do I have any plans to do it? No. Okay, okay. So the the million dollar question is what happened? Cuz we all read a lot of rumbling about they got you out of here and then you actually told that you uh, you eat the channel kind of deactivated the channel. I did. And then it's, and then we we got like a lot of speculation but we didn't get like a definitive answer. Can you give us a play by play? Yeah, uh, my, my, my channel was taken down because of a very butthurt sore loser hmm. um, who likes to dole it out but can't take it. And um, and being part and parcel of the left, she, you know, do what many people of the left do. They play very dirty. And um, and she was able to game the YouTube system. And uh, this I've seen this before. I've been through this before. But um, things have changed because back then I didn't have the alternatives that I have before me right now. So the official the official line is that I had numerous copyright violations on me. The real story, the real story is that um, my opponent could dish it out, but she couldn't take it. And she went to white zaddy and being a butthurt sore loser, she lost the debate. Um, and instead of just taking the L and keeping on getting up, she went to white zaddy as many uh, on the left are always whining about patriarchy do they they hate the patriarchy until they need it. And uh, she was able to game the system. Um, do I cry over spilt milk? I do not. I just keep right on getting up. If anything, I want to show black men what a champion looks like. You get knocked down. That's not the issue. The issue is whether you get back up. And I just got back up and kept on getting up. I had a great week. My very first official week on Rumble just passed. Um, did very well. And uh, we're just going to continue to keep building and growing and keep being a voice uh, at, in this black love discussion. We're going to keep speaking truth to power. We're going to keep saying it like it is. We're going to keep bringing the facts the, un the inconvenient facts and statistics and data and we're going to do it in an entertaining and um and a very jokey kind of way i find that many on the left have no sense of humor um they're devoid of any type of real life to tell you the truth they, they're, they're not funny 
they're not funny they're not humorous they're not entertaining and uh we're going to continue to keep doing that and it's uh you, you you know the old saying is true you can't keep a good man down so that's that's in a nutshell and i got to be careful with this because things have now moved into a i guess you could say legal realm so i got to be careful what did you say uh, yeah. uh, i i understand and by the way I, i'm a lefty by the way <laughs> what you said about lefties not being funny like i like to take to art i am very offended oh, yeah. you're a victim mm. Mm. here we go csi i will be contacting rumble authorities to make sure that you get to <laughs> yeah, they, have, they have an anti-cancellation policy over them yeah i know i know but but obsidian can you give me like a play-by-play -play to everybody that like missing this because it seems like we are getting pieces and details and we kind of get the conclusion but like give me an origin stories of how sure, the sure, sure. I, for, for a long, yeah sure for a long time i've been a, a, a outspoken critic of what i refer to as modern black feminists um, i'm working on a book of the uh, it's not exactly the same name but it has the same sentiment so i'm working on a book of the same name for lack of a better way of putting mm. it i'm working on a book for the same name modern black feminists are black feminists who are essentially live online okay? mm. they don't do a whole lot in the real world um their presence is really online so they're they're like you know hacktivist types and i have been taking the fight to them um they have had a free hand in the academy we all saw what happened with uh my opponent's alma mater harvard has pretty much been disgraced and uh and and you know thoroughly discredited as a den den of intellectual fraud and 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 uh and anti-semitism among other things um but um but but uh yeah i've been taking the fight to them from day one um it's uh, it's well documented in my writings um all of which i'm going to be compiling in this book so people can go back and and you and it will have the dates when i wrote those articles and posts and and essays um so they can see that i'm not i'm not no new jack i've been doing this for a long time and mm -hmm. um the individual in question is just the latest to uh, be in my sights, so to speak. Um, I have zero desire to, per to cause her personal or financial harm. I think she has a right to exist. I think she has a right to ply her trade. I think she has a right to uh, have her opinions. But she is not right to be protected from the pushback that she's going to get from her opinion. She's not uh, entitled to her own facts. And, um, and I will continue uh in my uh assessment of people like her and her fellow travelers and not all of them are black female there's some are black male i will continue to engage their ideas and show and prove why they're just wrong 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 so um how did it all get started it got started over britney renner hmm. this individual made a video about britney renner a year ago contending that she was a grifter and a pick me so right off the rip, she's calling her names. And where I come from, if your Britney, argument Britney Renner pick me? That's correct. Jeez. And and if where I come from, if you call some if your argument consists of calling names and schoolyard taunts, it is an indication that you do not have an argument. So my lady friend and I did an impromptu, did not plan it, impromptu live. When my lady friend just made an uh, observation, she just asked, well, you know, you know, she's going after this lady so hard. And what, what's the deal? Is she jealous or something? And that's what sent her over the deep cliff. And that's how everything got started. Where it got started with me is she made a number of claims about the black manosphere. For example, the black manosphere is a public health crisis. She said this with a, with a straight face. Um and my response to that was to put in writing uh just exactly how that idea was ridiculous and even more to the point um how the idea that there needs to be legislation for the passport bureaus because of their sex trafficking of vulnerable and innocent third world women and young girls so what i did was responded by just sh simply showing the facts 
the facts that um, both home and abroad, many, not all, not all, not all, but many black women themselves engage in what's called romance tourism, that anything it, dealing with a man with, with an age beginning with a two is okay. These women are old enough to be their, their, their mamas. Um, here stateside engaging in what is known as exotic sip and paint parties, which are, you know, organized sex trafficking. They, you know, they're pandering literally. Um, and I just brought all that evidence to the forefront. Uh, we're going to have a conversation about sex trafficking. If we're going to have a conversation about tricking, if we're going to have a conversation about taking advantage of poor people, then we need to have a conversation about the passport sellers. It's a very well uh, documented, um, well developed body of literature about this. There's a very good book called the Pursuit of Happiness by a black feminist female academic named Bianca C. Williams out of the City University of New York. And she spent three or four years going back and forth to Jamaica with an outfit called Girlfriend Tours International, wherein middle aged black women go to Jamaica for the express purpose of getting their groove back, i.e. having sex with poor and often very young Jamaican men for pay. They yeah. call it romance. It's, it's, ex, it's sex tourism. Uh, I live in Portugal. British women been doing this shit all the time. They go to Africa, like on their 50s and 60s to have sex with like fertile bulls, let's call them right. that. Because that's right. what they call it. And, and so if we're going to have that kind of conversation, then we need to be honest and put that squarely on the table right now. And I don't expect you to notice because you're in Portugal, so I don't expect mm -hmm. you to notice. But right here in the United States, as we speak, um, everybody knows that Donald Trump has a lot of uh, court cases that he's fighting. One of those court cases is in the state of Georgia. And the woman that is at the head of that to deal with it is named Fannie Willis black woman in her early 50s she has hired her lover nathan wade still married to his wife going through a divorce she has hired him as his as her special prosecutor and has paid him upwards of seven hundred thousand dollars to be her lover she is the biggest trick in america black america white america anywhere she's the biggest trick going and she's not alone there are a lot of um black women again i'm not saying all but there are a lot of black women who do this they trick on men and so i just want to bring all of that to the forefront if we're going to have um uh, if we're going to have these conversations then we need to have an honest full-throated one and not a contrived uh made up one that's uh that's devoid of facts and has more spin than truth i just simply brought forward the truth and i sh and i wanted people to see for themselves what was going on at these I Let's say hello here to Nancy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Um, I just had a, a quick comment because one thing that I actually I disagree and I agree with you at the same time um, about dating single mothers. Um, I'm a single mom of three. All of my kids are from the same dad. I, I was married. I'm 29 years old. I raised my kids on my own, but... Your policy about not dating single moms, I never, I never, ever bring my men around my children. Never. They don't even know that I date. Who doesn't you know? Your kids don't know that you date? No, they just know that they're going to go to their grandma's house and spend the night, and then that's when I get to go out. You know, to the, I would never, ever bring another man in front of, I mean, unless I was, it was a serious relationship, of course I would bring my, the guy around my kids, but my kids don't have to know that, or, you know, I, I do let the man that I'm dating know that I have kids, you know, right off the bat, and just to be clear, you know, I'm not going to hide that, that I have children, but right. I would never impose my children on a man. So, so when you date, you have no expectations of having a relationship? I mean, I just kind of take it day by day, and if it goes somewhere, then it doesn't. If it doesn't, oh well. 
Yeah, but uh, like if a guy said to you, well, you know, I don't want to have kids and I don't want to have your kids so we can just have some fun. How would you feel about that? I would say, well, come on, because I don't want to have any more kids myself. There you go. I'm done having kids. But of course, he, being in a relationship with you, he might he would have to absorb your kids. Well, I mean, eventually he'll have to come. Unless, you know, unless you were fine with being friends with benefits with a guy. Well, yeah, that too. Which right. I, mean, I understand that. I do understand that, but I mean, not all single mothers are the same. No one said that they're all the same. But one thing they all have in common: their kids come first. And the oh, men no, they yeah, date, me uh, and the men they date, date come second, third, fourth, or fifth, and 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 the fact is, uh, it's just for for a guy, I wouldn't recommend it as a uh, as as somebody to date. No, I mean, if uh, if I you are guy, you you are only available when you can get childcare, uh, oh, no, when, when you are not worn out from raising three kids, uh, you you're not available. You know, you're not a booty call. Oh, no, not like that here. Well, that's my point. Uh, you know, our listeners uh, might just want uh, to have a booty call or might want a one-nighter. Or they might want uh, somebody who they call the phone. They say, okay, I'm ready for you. I'm coming over. And, and not be told, hey, um, not tonight. I've got a headache, a sick kid, uh, got to be to school in the morning. <laughs> it's just not appropriate for guys who want to get late. No, well, okay, for a guy who's just looking to get laid, well, of course not, you know, but, it, I mean, not every guy, single guy is like that. If Dating wants, a single mother is for guys who want to ultimately have a relationship with somebody with kids who they will eventually time. share responsibilities. Yeah, and but then that's the, that's the choice of the guy that he can but make. But that's why I tell the guys, don't be dating single mothers because these are things that are definitely going to happen to you down the line and you don't want that. But it, it also depends on the woman. Don't you think? Well, I, I, as, from the man's point of view, we don't really care about the woman. What we care about is getting what we want. Well, of course. But well, there's women that are the same way. But there you may be. That? But again, I'm, I'm advising guys how to get more tail for less money. And I'm advising okay. guys how to get laid uh, with a minimum of energy expended, time wasted, and, and certainly a minimum of responsibility. Oh, of course, because, I mean, I'm sure you're telling guys to take care of themselves, right? Well, telling guys to take care of themselves how? Uh, condom? Oh, we, 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 of course, don't you listen to the show? Of course we do. Okay. We tell guys okay. to wear condoms so they don't get, get anybody knocked up by the same token. Uh, see, if a woman... that's, what I, that's another comment I want. I actually agree with you about guys paying child support. I'm divorced now, and I, I'm lucky if I can squeeze a dime out of my ex-husband and for anything. Oh, there you go. Now, hang on a second, Nancy. Bobby, what do you want to say to Nancy here? I think she's totally missing the point about the, the like is rules. You don't date a single mother, not because you're afraid to meet her kids, because you don't want her to get pregnant. She's not going to have an abortion when you want to have one. She's just going to say, no, I'm keeping it. And then you're stuck with 18, 18 years of payments. It has nothing to do with meeting the kids. Exactly. Totally different level. It has nothing to do with that. It's because I don't want to get you pregnant because you're going to keep it. I can talk a girl into aborting it if she's never had kids before, but, you know, just... Yeah, I see what you're saying because I, mean, I, I myself, I don't want to have any more kids. I, I'm done. My baby factory is closed. I got myself fixed so I can have any more kids that I don't want anymore. Right, but uh, anyone who dates you eventually is going to be having to spend a day at fill in the oh, blank. No. Universal well, Studios, I mean, Disneyland, Legoland. Uh, well, again, again, that would depend on what happens. A later Pixar on. film, but, right? That's Sorry. strike number two of that, though. Tom is is paying for other people's kids, right? Right, it's, it's too And old. that's where it ends up going eventually. No, I know, but what I'm saying is that if event if it if it turns into that, then that it turned into that. It's not that like for me, for example, personally, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a man that's gonna. That may not be what you're looking have, for, you know, but it is what you will expect if a man stays with you any period of time. But then again, I'm not looking for a relationship. But if you have a relationship, that's what you're going to expect. Well, my, maybe like not now, but maybe in the long run. Well, that's my point. Well, why would a man want to start a relationship with someone who eventually is going to say, uh, we're all going to Disneyland Saturday, that's $255. It's damaged goods, Tom. Okay, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm also not expecting a man to, to raise my children and take care of my kids. You just might expect kids. them to pay the bill when you go to the movies. Either, it can go either way. Well, I, <laughs> what do you mean either way? He can pay or I can pay. No, but, but the point is, he should never pay. They're not his kids. Right. Okay, I see your point. That's okay. I agree with you. 
But but I'm telling you, most single mothers, uh, when they date a man, and uh, once the man meets the kid, the man is expected to pay for that stuff. Even if it's okay. not you, that's what that most. Case, I, okay, in that way, I, case, I agree with you. Yes, most single mothers do. And because most do, and because it's easier to find a needle in a haystack than the ones who don't, I recommend that guys not date single mothers. See, but then that, that's like. That messes the whole thing up because women like that mess it up for women like me. I'm not here to help women like you. I am here to help guys get laid. That's what this course is about. Okay, I see. And, you know, and we're also here to show you how men think. So certainly you, you see how men think. We don't want to take your kids to Disneyland or the movies. We don't want to pay for some other man's children. Uh, we don't want to spend time with children. We, we, a date is the purpose of a date is to get laid. That's the purpose of it. Okay. It is not to go to Legoland with your kids. It's it's to get laid. So in anything that you call a date that doesn't involve imbibing some alcohol and then going home and getting getting frisky is not a date around here. Okay. 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 When Shrek Four comes out, taking your kids to the, the to the movie theater that's that's not a date for us. No, and I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect it to. Uh, but most women do. Okay, but I'm speaking from my personal. Oh, but, but you see, the show is not the Nancy show. The show no, is. I know. We are no, broadcasting I'm just, I'm just trying to, to get out there for the women. Broad audience of broads, huh? No, for the single moms that are like me who really like don't care about having a relationship, just want to have a good time. I understand that, but the problem is most guys can't tell the difference, so I say just stay away from it entirely. Okay. And there's very few of you out there, and a lot more of the other kind. Yes, there is. Right. I do agree with you on that. Okay. I do agree with you on that. All right. Nancy, Bobby, thank you for the calls. It's like this one. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. I choose rich. There is no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man and I have been a poor man. I choose rich. One of the most beautiful things that I learned in this space. Um, and I'll give you all a real world example. When I got here, uh, this was years ago, I found a bunch of brothers from different walks of life had been through the same thing with the B-dubs. And if we're being honest, and if we didn't still have, if we didn't still have our humanity, it's almost like we have a million and one reasons to really be, to, to really have a vitriol towards them, right? But a lot of us are ingrained with that, in my case, that good old uh, Southern Baptist humanity. Uh, some come up with that Pentecostal humanity, you know, or some come up with that Methodist humanity, right? And you, you get beat down when you're young, you get into the school system and you clearly start to see, damn, this is a clear pipeline to, to the prison industrial complex. And you're able to dodge and weave that and in your adult life you get with Keisha or B dub and, and they're wholeheartedly bought into the system and they're gonna use it against you every chance they get. And after you come out of all of that and you've been beat up and and, and, and scarred and bruised and you make mistakes and tripped up along the way, and then you get beat down for not being perfect. But what I understood is that there are statues probably the size of this damn high-rise apartment building that I live in right now of King Leopold who was chopping hands off in, in Africa uh, to benefit uh, you know the, to, to benefit uh, the queen right and even with all of the horrible um, atrocities that he did they still erected statues in his name and so when you look at that and you think about the minute hiccups and mess-ups that we have uh, I think it's important and it is it is almost a responsibility of ours. Uh, granted, you know, making sure it's not something that's completely debaucherous, but I think it's it's it is it is a a duty of ours to let brothers know, hey bro, no other race of men have to be perfect in this world and they still get that due respect. So I say all of that to say that man, with everything that happens in our lives as black men, all of the shit that we go through dealing with um the system, all of the things that we go through dealing with, uh, I don't even call them my counterparts anymore, dealing dealing with black women, all of the things that we go through 
uh, trying to duck and dodge the potholes that you're going to run into just have just wearing this skin that we wear um make sure we we are extending that olive branch to the brothers and a lot of us in this space we are doing this you know we're doing it through stream yard we're doing it through some of the conversations that we have behind the scenes but at the end of the day um in wartime going back to what you were talking about with the guerrilla warfare in wartime the 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 as they say the young men are for the fighting and the older men are for counsel right and that's what i've tried to do in this space um and and trying to work with brothers and trying to put the message out and now I've begun to try and hide the message inside of some excuse me try to hide the message inside of some entertainment um to draw brothers in right hiding the medicine and the candy but um I'm appreciative to be in the space uh, I'm thankful for the I'm thankful for being in the space I know that we are saving lives and I know that even if in our lifetime we don't have a chance to see the paradigm completely shift right away from what the status quo is at least we can say that we were on the right side of history we put our best foot forward and we purposely went out and tried to change the narrative to make it better for the, the this next wave of young brothers that are coming a generation or two behind us i'll land my plane there sorry hey where's stewie that's tomorrow and that is it for us today okay i don't know whatever it is it's not right on the teleprompter there it is. We are going to do Sting, yeah. There's no words there to play us out. What does that mean, to play us out? To end the show? Yeah, yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we'll leave you with a... I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! Fucking thing sucks! In five, four, three. Three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Stewie Griffin. Thanks for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. This is not real. It's just a dream. Please, please, wake up. Wake up. This is not real. It's just a dream. Please, please, wake up. Steppenwolf would fail. Yes. Yes, you did. My master, now that the mother boxes have been destroyed, how will you retrieve your great prize? Anti life is found, Desaad, and we will stop at nothing to possess it. Ready the Armada? We will use the old ways. Doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. Doesn't matter who we are. I came here to rescue you from him. Well, we all appreciate your concern, Colonel. And we'll try to be extra careful. I'm just amazed that he allowed any of your posse to live. Is that right? Strictly speaking, he slipped up. You're lucky to be breathing. That's just great. Colonel, you came out here to find out why one of your machines blew a gasket. You don't seem to want to accept the fact that you're dealing with an expert in guerrilla warfare. With a man who's the best. With guns, with knives, with his bare hands. A man who's been trained to ignore pain. Ignore weather. To live off the land. To eat things that'll make a billy goat puke. Kill. Period. Win by attrition. 